Hello and welcome back to Von Milhausen Plays Darkfall The Journal. Yes, we're not actually looking at Darkfall The Journal at the moment, we're looking at my web browser. Uh, so I said at the end of the last episode that I was going to have a go at decoding the cipher in the book. And when I was working on it, I realized that uh, the torn up note that we found with the letters in it was probably a clue towards it, and it is indeed. Um, ignore the section up at the top with the two X's in it, that's all red herringy stuff. So it says, or is either equal to a or to i so it turns out that or is equal to i and then it says or uh, yeah or is obviously i so i equals or is another one so or is i and i is or uh, let's see where is i is or there it is uh, so d equals w and d does indeed equal w so then using that as a start, I was able to work out the other letters for myself. And the note on the countertop then says, Guard the skin with your life. I know I must sound like a madman. Edith is feeling inclined to phone the police. You must trust me. There is a great evil with us here in the hotel. My research is going well. I just need time. Do not open your door this night to anyone. And so without further ado, let us resume the game. So we're back in the game. Now, obviously, this was the original note. So it was written uh, to Andrew from GC. So I'm guessing this GC is George. And the GG that was on the note in the bathroom written to Matilda Fly was probably the same person uh, that is known as Miss Grabble. Now, Miss Grabble's bedroom was in 1E downstairs so i want to very quickly go back down there and see if we can uh find the thing that she was referring to that she was hiding the scrap of skin that uh what was that she said uh that she was lying on it literally or something hang on it's just on this scrap of paper here in the bathroom uh blah 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 let's see um I have placed it somewhere suitable. It is rather beneath me, literally. So I just want to go and have a look and see if it's uh, underneath her bed or something. So I will take, bring us back down to room 1E. Well, here is room 1E. So let's go in here again. Who are you? Uh, well, I am von Milhausen. Electromagnetic source within two meters. Okay, now she said it was beneath her, but I can't actually look at the bed or the box. But this was a weird room where I could activate the torch. This room is ghastly. Why did I ever come here? That really does sound like somebody who would be complaining a lot, which Miss Gravel was supposed to be doing. But I don't see anything more I can do in here. Electromagnetic activity within five meters. I can't otherwise activate anything here. I can just look at that one picture. I can't approach the wardrobe at all. Or walk into the room. Or do anything with the bed. No, so I don't know. When she said in her notes that the... She hid the piece of skin um, beneath her, literally. I'm not entirely sure what she meant, unless she meant like a basement room, but like we can go downstairs and into the basement, but I don't think we found anything there. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to keep going upstairs and we will have a look at the third floor of the hotel. As you do. So I can't turn around here. I can only walk forward. So there's a much fewer number of rooms up here. So we have uh, 3A. 
It's unlocked. Oh, we have a painter here. Now we've seen some of these paintings in the hotel, then in the original bathroom. So maybe that's Mr. Crabtree. Doesn't say. Ghostly goings on. Ooh. Uh, that's just those again. You can look at this bookshelf. Poe paints. Hmm. Don't seem to be able to do anything here. Can we have a look at the book? We can't. We can't have a look at the candle. So that's very odd. Wonder why they're giving us this view. Oh well. Can't look at anything else here. Ah, hang on. Miss a piece of paper. So table four. Ah, here we go. Here was another clue, I guess, to the dining room. Letting us know that was table four and giving us a close up view of the symbol. It does like that kind of squiggly thing. Okay, we've looked at that painting already and we can't look at any of the rest of these shelves. Okay, what have we got here? Some sketches in the panel of the door. Again, no light switch. Can't interact otherwise with the T. Nope. Okay. So can we look at the mugs? Oh, we can look down here. Ah. So now I guess gas is flowing. Hmm. I could interact with something here. but I don't have whatever is required. So uh, before I do anything else, let me just turn off the gas again. Ooh, stuff. Okay, what do we got? Turpentine, Arthur's Magic Lemon Ink. Ah, Magic Lemon Ink. Now, I happen to know that if you take lemon juice and uh, use it on paper, like say with a brush or something, then you can kind of use it as invisible ink. Uh, it dries relatively clear, and if you then heat the paper, the sugars in the lemon juice caramelize and turn brown, revealing what was written. Um, so I'm guessing his magic lemon ink is a secret messagey kind of thing, and that therefore we'll have to find a piece of paper and we'll have to hold a piece of paper up over the Bunsen burner to reveal what message is hidden. And in fact, um, Andrew Verney was referring to something like that in one of the messages in his room. He was talking about uh, using fire to reveal a hidden message or something. So, okay, we can't look at this device. It's all this upper shelf. We have a note here. Oh, gosh. Uh, so we have another substitution cipher. I will solve that one off screen. Uh, bloop. Okay. Is there anything else here to look at? Nope. And nope. Okay. So what I will do is I am going to go and solve this substitution cipher and I will bring you back. Okay. Uh, so it seems to use pretty much the same substitution as the previous one. There was one or two letters in this one that weren't in the previous message, and so I had to decode those as well, but it wasn't too difficult. So the message reads, Arthur, I think it would be wise to write our own, uh, to write our records and drawings using your invisible ink. I do not want the others to know of our plans just yet. Dot, 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 dot. Yours, George. And George is written in uh, regular English. So let's return to the game. Okay, so we're back here again. So it, there is indeed something in invisible ink somewhere, but I haven't had an opportunity to pick up any pieces of paper yet. 
So can't really bring things back here to reveal them over the heat of the invisible ink thing. Okay, we clearly have a ghostly glowing going on here. My PKE meter, it so says is minimal electrical activity. I, I'm sorry. Do you want to say that again? Sold this up? Don't know. Uh, there's certainly a lot of pictures of this person. Rural rides in the southern, western, and eastern counties of England. Uh, tours in Scotland, uh, together with tours in Scotland and in the northern and midland counties of England, and letters from Ireland by William Cobbett. Good lord, that's a long title. The whole, including many rides and tours never before reprinted, uh, edited with an introduction, notes a biographical record of upwards of 900 persons mentioned, an index of places, and a bibliographical note, GDH and Margaret Cole, with numerous vignettes by John Nash, and a map of Cobbett's country uh, by A.E. Taylor, London, Peter Davies, 1930. Hmm. What else have we got here? Oh, a note. Aha! It is a picture of a bird. I'm sure there is more to it than that. So there's that guy again. I wonder if I were allowed to see this one picture. Different colors of paint. And nothing else on that table. Okay, can't look at any of those. And again, still can't do anything over here. Okay, well, let's turn the gas and stuff back on. And use this. Now, I don't want the paper to burn. There we go. Boop. So let's turn that off. Really? Fine. Okay, Betty, T-Y-M-A, Fly Morcana, Grabble is Phrenic, and Edith is Ixian. So let me jot these down. I hope the piece of paper isn't going to burn to death. Okay, now, I've, I've made a note of all those. I need to turn off this gas before I go mad. Ah, my ears. Um, so all of those things sounded to me like they were uh, constellations that were on your man's charts. So... When we're finished up here, I want to go back down to his two charts and look them up because I suspect we will find uh, symbols on the blueprints that were in the wardrobe to match each one of those. And possibly we can use that to get one of the symbols that we're missing. Because we have Miss Fly's symbol and the other one that we have is from the Theodolite. Um, yes, we have the Theodolite symbol. Uh, and we have some of the, we have some of the words. So it was the car's words that our brother had stuck in his brain. And, uh, there was something, Larsus and a symbol was, uh, was noted on the bathroom wall. So we have a couple of words, we have a couple of symbols, and I think these constellations, I think these are going to end up being symbols as well. Uh, but before we head back downstairs and check the constellation stuff out, let's check out this other room across the hallway here. So we were in room A, which was the artist's room. Uh, now we're in this fancy looking room. Again, no light switch. What have we got? Uh, something. A Collins, Collins, Tollins, A History of Alchemy by Frederick Zeus. Good lord. 
History of Alchemy. Alchemical manuscripts and books have always been illustrated with symbolic figures. There are, of course, simple signs used to notate various alchemical substances and processes, but the symbolism used in alchemy went much further than the mere use of special signs. It is important to realize that there is no fixed, rigid alchemical language of symbolism, and it is not possible to draw up a comprehensive dictionary meaning for each symbol, which will describe its use in every alchemical text. Different alchemists use the same symbol in different ways, and even within the same work, an individual symbol can have many meanings. Although there are core meanings to some symbols, their significance must be read from the symbolic context in which they appear. In some cases, the actual symbol can have various functions depending on which material or chemical is involved to represent its form. The combination of these materials uh, creating varied and hugely differing results. Sibylla e for, uh, Fortuna, sorry, Sibylla e Fortuna, in 1878, posed a question: mysticism or physics? If newer theories concerning modern science and its parallels to the work of the ancient alchemists is to be considered, we must ask ourselves this one simple question. It is my belief that modern science did not replace alchemy, it simply evolved out of it, disregarding texts and practices thought to be flights of fancy. It is now commonly known that metals, organic matter and liquids have unique clandestine signatures which can only be accessed and used by those that are fully adept at such practices. It is believed that by many that some trials and ancient combinations which were thought long since forgotten are being resurrected. As recently as 1912, a self-proclaimed alchemist published documents which illustrated how he had successfully created a seer chalice or pool of sight. The supposed ritual involved manipulating the reflective qualities of water to not only magnify the present, but to reflect the past and the future. Intriguing. Pagan Power and Earth Forces by Sibia El Fortuna, published by Bloomsbury Bygones. Water, one of the four basic elements, its properties are fluid and mutable, cast reflections of the past, present and future, its mystical power could be reflected and therefore could be magnified by its nature, it could bring about a full awareness of self through inner reflection, a powerful symbol of rebirth. Chalk, a lesser element, through, uh, though its powerful earth nature could create boundaries which could be used to keep evil influences at bay. Its association with the goddess in her guise as a virgin links this element with purity in its most powerful form. And like in other works of fiction and stuff, you will see chalk circles being used as a kind of a barrier against evil forces. Uh, bronze, one of the first alloys to be worked by alchemists, this amalgam of earth elements could be used to bind strength and used for powerful enchantments. Uh, wood, Another powerful symbol of, rebir of rebirth, it symbolizes the duality of nature, which could be both hard and soft at the same time. Its use in sympathetic healing could also be turned to more malicious uses. Now, that one is wood, and the next one is sandstone, and we've seen both wood and sandstone uh, mentioned on the photograph that was hidden in the lid of the soapbox in the uh, second floor bathroom. Sandstone and wood, so I'm guessing... There's at least another two elements being used in the other half of the photograph that was missing. But let's read about sandstone. Sandstone, another highly mutable element which contains elements of durability and softness at the same time. It is a powerful catalyst which could come together with a variety of diverse elements to enhance and magnify any desired effect. So it's a multiplier. Mercury, known as quicksilver, it is possibly the oldest and most often used element. Its heaviness was often used when water couldn't be. Interesting. Okay, so there's some alchemical stuff coming into the game. And out of curiosity, can we look at this anymore? No, we can't. Okay. Uh, right, so that's the code hangers. We can't look up at the top. We can't examine the window. We can have a look at these pictures. The Dorset Photographic Guild is pleased to present uh, G. Crabtree. Ah, so he was... Uh, I wonder if G. Crabtree is George Crabtree. Hmm. There's so many people with G's in their names in this game. Uh, it's pleased to prevent G. Crabtree with the annual award for photographic excellence in the field of capturing nature. Okay. So this is Crabtree's room at the top of his very own hotel, I guess. And there wasn't anything else to look at there. No. 
we can examine this table. Ah, this is the table from the torn photo. So we had this bowl here and the chalk circle. And in my notes, I had wood on the left and sandstone on the right, I believe. Sorry, no, sandstone on the left and wood on the right. And so there's a wooden one. And one of these will be sandstone, but I don't know which is which because they all just look the same. So we had wood, which went over here. And then sandstone was small. And let's assume it's this one here. And I went on this side of the bowl. And then we would have had like these two or something. Or maybe these go the other way around. Or maybe one of these is sandstone. Okay, well, clearly I'm no alchemist. I don't really know what I'm doing there. Uh, but I suspect we will be assembling that uh, later. Very interesting. Okay. Oh, was there something else I could look at there? No. Right, let's have a look at, can I have a look at that photo or at the bed? Oh, we can have a look at the bed. Ah, a hidden note. I could lose my mind reading these words over and over. I should be happy that I now have all 12, lyrical name and symbol. Perhaps I never thought I would get this far and I would have fallen to the darkness within or the darkness waiting outside the door. I must get the order right or I'll join those in the hellish chasm. They still scream out at me through useless mouths, those of the past, the present and future. This time tomorrow, it'll all be over one way or the other. I have prepared a letter in case of failure. Edith should find it. They know so little of the torment of my mind while they sing, dance and drink in the bar. Oh God, Arthur, please aid me in this act. Clearly the words of a desperate man. And this is, ah, uh, this, yeah, this must be George Crabtree uh, because Edith had left a note at the at the hotel reception sort of saying that she had been looking for George but hadn't seen him anywhere and had been very worried about his state of mind as of late and was asking the the lady that was looking after the old sing song if she could keep an eye out for George and uh, let her know that she was looking for him so I guess George has become aware of the evil lurking in the hotel and was trying to do something about it now he mentioned 12 uh, let's see, how did he phrase it here again? Uh, D -d 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 -d. Uh, all 12, lyrical name and symbol. So I wonder if we need 12 words and 12 symbols? Because I don't think I've come across that many. Uh, but let's have a look. Okay, what have we got here? Can I look at this book with a picture of a, a dragon on it? Uh, Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. A Warning to the Curious by Mr. James and it has a note tucked into it, and ancient times, a history of the early world. And there's something down here inside. Let's have a look at this note. The British Museum, Museum Street, Bloomsbury, London. Dear Mr. Crabtree, thank you for your letter. I forwarded the photographic image you sent to the department that specializes in encryption, inscription, and ancient texts. They have sent me the most interesting information. Although they were unable to place the symbol within any known language, it is quite clearly, to a comparative degree, similar to the cave paintings recently discovered on the remote Scottish island of Trochmoor. The cave walls are decorated with geometric patterns, often incorporating circles and symmetrical flourishes. We are able to suggest some possible meanings or interpretations of the symbol. The circular enclosed centre suggests some form of entrapment or closure. The arms would be the energy enforcing the trap. The fact that there are four of them also suggests some homage to nature, either the four winds, four earth stones, etc., etc., this is all in keeping with the Celtic traditions of the time. Dating the cave is a near impossible task, and tentative approximation would place its last usage around the 3rd century BC. This, you understand, places your symbol's origins in a most interesting time in British history. Please write again with the information of where you took the photograph. Uh, perhaps a dig could be arranged. Robert Hutchinson. Interesting. Ah. Now, this, right, I guess we have to put these monarchs in their 
order. Now, her portrait was on the second floor. His was on the ground floor. So maybe his is up here. Or we need to know the uh, their actual title. So I don't, uh, I don't think I made a note. He 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 was the fifth. I'm pretty sure, but I didn't make a note. I I didn't think I could click on her picture at all, and I don't even recall seeing that one. Um, he's not the one that's down in uh, Miss Grable's room. That's a different different person. So we'll need to come back and look at that later. Uh, or I guess we could go and do it very quickly now. No, I'll leave that till the till the next episode. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time on Von Minheisen plays Darkfall the Journal.